So what we've done so far in all of our lessons is in lesson number one with uh, this data handling or statistics, we looked at frequency tables and we looked at two different types of uh, data. We looked at discrete and we looked at continuous. With, co with discrete, it's something that you can count. With continuous, it was something that you measure. And within that lesson, we also looked at um, stem and leaf diagrams. Then in lesson number two, we looked at um, how to show discrete data. How do you show it? And with that, we used pie charts or bar graph. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna learn how to show um, continuous data. And for that, we're gonna use line graphs and histograms, okay? So that's where we're at, so let's get started. The rainfall experienced per month is given below. Okay, so in January there was 40 millimeters, in May there was 50, you get the idea. They're showing us the rainfall. Present the information using a line graph. Okay, so the way that a line graph works is, okay, so we need a y-axis and we need a x-axis. And once again, we're always gonna do um, three things. We're gonna put a heading, so rainfall, in now we could put a specific place usually they'll tell us the place so let's just say um, town a in the year 2020 let's go into the future 2042 okay so something like that now that would be your heading okay so you'd have a heading over there then on your x-axis you would have the month okay and then over on the y-axis you could say rainfall and that rainfall is measured in millimeters okay now what we can do um some teachers like to leave a gap over here so they'll start they'll put january over there um but what other teachers do is they start over there so you must just see what your teacher does i'm going to start it on the on the um right over there okay and then we're gonna have so that'll be january then i'm gonna have feb march april may uh, June, July, and where are we going up to? August, okay. Now the rainfall, we've got a 40, that's the lowest I can see, and the highest is a 67. Okay, so we could probably, oh no, the highest is a 80. Okay, so that's fine. What we could do then is we could go up in tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Okay, so in January, the rainfall is 40. So you're just going to go and put a dot. Okay, there we go. Let's use a different color. In February, 55. Okay, so February, 55. See, I'm not drawing any bars or anything like that. This is a line graph. And then in March, 60. And then April is uh, 40. And then May, 50. June, 75. Up there. Um, July 80, okay, now obviously I'm going into my writing here, I do apologize, and then, um, that's a bit skew, let's put it there, okay, and then uh, August 67, August 67, 67, 67, it's about there, well, like there, okay, now because it's a line graph, you're just going to connect a line, so there, then there, and there, 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 there and there. So that is what a line graph would look like. Okay, so with this question, it's quite interesting. They want us to do a histogram, but to do a histogram, you need to know the frequencies. So remember in one of our earlier lessons, I showed you exactly how to do these frequency tables. Sometimes in the middle, they ask you for the tally as well. Remember that? Okay, so in the 50 to 59 category, the masses, uh, there's one person. Okay, so we'll just put one. Then for the 60 to 69, there's one, two, three. For 70 to 79, there's one, two. Okay, and then 80 to 89, there is one. And then, oh, forgot about that one. There's also a 90. Okay, so let's just quickly um, 
make a new category and then there's one person over there and in the 80 to 89 we said there was one so let me just make sure one two three four five six seven eight one plus three is four four plus two is six yeah okay so we have gotten everything perfect now we're going to take this information and we're going to use that to draw our histogram Okay, so we're gonna draw, draw a histogram over here. So a histogram is almost like a bar graph. So you need your y-axis, you need your x-axis. Um, obviously you'd be doing this with a ruler, hey? And like this, okay, now you need on your x-axis, we could say mass, that's measured in kilograms. And then over here we could say number of learners. And then here we could say mass of learners in school okay and so now we just need our different categories so as i said earlier your teacher might decide to leave a gap over here and then they carry on with their histogram like that but what other teachers do is they start immediately okay so just see what your teacher does what they prefer so just once again you can have a gap in between uh, from the, at the starting position. So you could have a histogram that does, whoops, those, must, but there mustn't be a gap in between the bars once you've started. Okay, so you could get something like that. But then, as I said, some teachers start immediately. Okay, so just check what your teacher does there. There's no right or wrong. Different textbooks show different things. As long as there's no gaps in between the bars. All right, so 50 to 59. So um, I'm gonna start right there. So oh no, I'll, I'll leave a gap. So then we're gonna go 50. Um, let's say 50 to 59, that's that category. And then 60 to 69, um, I'm actually gonna go 50 to 59, and then 60 to 69, um, 70 to 79, and then 80 to 89, and then 90 to 99. Okay, then number of learners, um, Sure, it only goes up to three, so we could make these quite spread out. One, two, and three, okay? Now, 50 to 59, there is only one person, so we're gonna, we're gonna draw our histogram. Remember, it's not a line graph now, now it's a histogram. Then um, 60 to 69, there's three. So now, remember, there's no gap in between, because this is not a bar graph. Okay, 70 to 79, two people. So I'm just gonna do that. And then 80 to 89, there is one. So, okay, this could actually come a bit closer. So 80 to 89, there is one. Um, so there. And then 90 to 99, there's also one. There we go. And so that is how we do a histogram. As I said, some teachers will leave a gap here, some teachers won't, doesn't really matter, that's both correct. And then there must be no gaps in between, like we've normally seen with a bar graph. With a bar graph, you do leave gaps, with histograms, you don't.